Hello, hello, and welcome to yet another video. So, this video today is going to be a brief at a glance retrospective of the Intel 4004 CPU, which is going to be turning 50 years old in a few days from now, as at the time of this recording. Sources are going to be in the description if you want to read more, because this video is just going to be a little bit of a crash course into its specs and history. So, to start things off, the 4004 was a general purpose single chip CPU released in 1971. Now, technically, it wasn't the first CPU design that existed at the time. Others did exist, but they were either specialized chips made up of multiple chips or were not intended for consumer purchase and use at the time. Intel's design with the 4004, however, was all three of these. Now, beginning with the design process, it was ordered all the way back in the early 1970s by the Japanese firm Busycom for a desk calculator. Now, this is literally what it sounds like. It's a calculator that's about the size of a typewriter, or small typewriter, that sits on top of your desk. And it was originally planned to be made up of two separate chips by Busycom, but Intel was ultimately able to simplify it down to a single chip. The design of the 4004, which was led by Federico Fagin alongside Martian Hoff and Masatoshi Shima, had a target speed of 1 MHz, while the physical design of the circuit was heavily based on Intel's existing product at the time, RAM chips. In specific, Intel at the time wished to have the 4004 be compatible with their own RAM offerings, and also, in order to simplify the actual manufacturing process, enable the use of the same die packaging as their other products at the time, which, in specific, was a 16-pin DIP, or dual inline package form factor, and was Intel's standard packaging for chips all the way back to their very first product, the Intel 3101 SRAM, which you might have seen earlier in the video with the gold top. As far as technical specs go, it had a 4-bit data bus and a 12-bit multiplexed address bus. And this meant that even though the chip only had a single 4-bit wide external bus, Internally, the address and data bus were shared, or conjoined in a way. Now, this helped to keep the pin count low, though it did come at the cost of a reduced performance due to needing to re-separate the buses, but given how the chip ran at 0.75 megahertz, or in more specific terms, 740 to 750 kilohertz, I don't really think that performance degradation due to something like that was really an issue at the time. And as far as transistor count goes, it had 2,300 transistors total and was manufactured on a 10 micron process, so equivalent to about, oh, 10,000 nanometers today. So, yeah, that's pretty much the entire video. I didn't really have much else to say, and thanks for watching. Once again, sources are going to be in the description if you want to read more, and until next time, I'm up. See ya.